So today I want to quickly talk to you about the differences between active learning and passive learning and then to add on this um, extra term called implicit learning. So we've talked before about active learning on our blog and it's something that has a lot of um, interest right now in the field of education is, is this idea of active versus passive learning. We've actually had this conversation uh, amongst us learning scientists a few times that the term active learning might not actually make a whole lot of sense because in order to commit something to memory, um, you have to be actively engaged with it. You have to be paying attention to it. That's the only way in which we encode information is if we're attending to that information. Uh, so the idea of passive learning doesn't make any sense. If it was passive, you wouldn't be learning it. Now, we can talk about depth of learning, and certainly uh, the more you engage with material on, say, a personal level, um, the better able you will be to recall it later on. So there are, uh, this, this sort of idea of active versus passive learning shouldn't be considered a dichotomy. Instead, it should be more of a continuum, where something can be more active, but in psychology terms, we just call that sort of depth of processing. The deeper you process material, the more likely you are to remember it later on and if it's at a shallow surface level you're less likely to remember it later on but it's not a dichotomy uh, because the concept of sort of passive learning of I'm just sitting in a classroom and I'm not really paying attention you're not learning anything in that case so um, the the idea of active versus passive learning maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense I was talking about this um, in one of my classes this week, actually, um, in an EDD program at Vanderbilt. And one of the students said, but wait a second, isn't there such a thing as implicit learning? And wouldn't that sort of be passive learning? And uh, we got to talking about it. And yeah, sure enough, there are some things that we learn um, without really trying, right? So um, my example was, Mm, every Katy Perry song that comes out, goodness knows I am not trying to actively commit that to memory. And yet, I still manage to uh, remember it, uh, whether I want to or not, such that I can then sing it later on. My other example from this past week is I have a toddler, um, and my uh, newborn baby sneezed, and my toddler said, bless you, baby. And aside from the fact that that is absolutely adorable, it also is an example of implicit learning. He's heard me say bless you after people sneeze repeatedly, and so he just automatically did that uh, without like actively trying to remember, like, so what am I supposed to do when this happens? No, he just said it because he's learned it. Um, without that explicit learning. Uh, so while we would argue that the yes, idea of sort of passive learning doesn't really make sense because you have to attend to something in order to remember it. That's true. And even in implicit learning, we are paying attention to those moments. That's how they uh, get ingrained in us. It's just that we're not necessarily trying, right? Um, so um, the other thing that can uh, go under implicit learning also are things like implicit bias. And uh, so, um, again, in class, my example for this was hearing that um, girls aren't good at math. So where does that come from? How do, we, how do we get those implicit biases in our heads to begin with? Well, frankly, they come from people saying it, just like I just did. So let's make sure we correct that with girls are really good at math. Girls are really good at math. The thing is that when we hear these two things together, the neurons in our brain that uh, are associated with girls in math get connected just because we've heard them together. And so we hear that over and over and over again and that connection becomes stronger. So even though explicitly we go, that's sexist, that's not true. Um, implicitly, we have this automatic connection that when we hear girls, we think not math because we've just heard it so many times. Even though we might, again, explicitly not believe that to be true, implicitly uh, we have this sort of automatic reaction that we're more likely to jump to that conclusion if we're not thinking about it okay and so that is sort of the fundamental basis for um, all kinds of biases so ageism and sexism and racism etc we have these biases whether we like it or not and the way that we can combat them is by um, essentially 
creating different connections, right? So um, you and I have maybe heard some of these things so many times at this point in our lives that in order to combat those images and those statements, uh, we would have to hear so much counter to that. So instead, um, the sort of ideal way to combat that is instead in the next generation. So to our children, we need to make sure that we are saying something different so that they don't have those same implicit biases that maybe you or I grew up with. So again, we have active learning where we are actively trying to commit something to memory. That's kind of what that term is referring to is this idea that we are trying um, to commit something to memory, that we're engaging with the material. Um, and so that's a very sort of classroom topic is this active learning. Then there's this idea of passive learning, which maybe doesn't really exist, uh, although it might be way, 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 way less active, right? So it might be that um, they're still trying to learn it, but they're not doing it in a very um, good way. Right? Um, so they're not really engaging with the material as much. So it might be less active, but it's still probably not genuinely passive, right? Because if they're paying attention at all, then, then that's still some possibility for learning. It's still active learning. Um, okay, so there's active and passive. But when we talk about this idea of passive learning, that, that they still have to be engaging with the material in order to learn it, that's not exactly true because we do also have these ideas of implicit learning. However, even for implicit learning, they have to be paying attention in order to learn, right? Um, so they might not be actively trying to commit that to memory, but they're still paying attention to it. So for example, you might know what the logo looks like for Starbucks. Um, did you ever try to learn that? No, but you know it. However, the only way that you do know it is because you ever paid attention to it to begin with. You looked at it, you attended to it in some way, and that's how it got into your long-term memory. So even implicit learning isn't totally passive, right? It's the closest thing we have to sort of passive learning, but instead it's um, sort of the, the least active, if you will, because we still have to pay attention to it in order for it to be learned. So um, I hope that that kind of helps to learn about the terminology difference between what we hear about active learning and passive learning. What is that um, versus sort of this idea of implicit learning, which might be um, the, the most passive learning that we have.